Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to read and write Hindi. We are also here because we want to learn to read and write Urdu. We are doing both at the same time. Today is our lesson number 16. This is our lesson number 16, and today we'll do the last part, part 4 of 4 of Uki Matra. The first four days, day number one through four, we did Aki Matra. Then the next four days, we did Iki Matra. The following four days, we did Oki Matra. And then on day number 13, 13, 14, 15, three parts we have already done. On day number 13, we started the Uki Matra. And today is the last part. Let's begin, shall we? What we learned in the last three days is that to make a U sound, the short U and the long U, to make a U sound, in Urdu, to make a short U, to make a short U sound, you simply take your letter, you simply take your letter, for example, here's the letter R, Re, Re, and if you want to convert Re into a Ru, it takes a Pesh, it takes a symbol called Pesh, it looks something like this, which happens to be the exact same symbol, looks like exact same symbol that you do in Hindi. Here's your Ru, and then you will put the same symbol underneath it, Ru. Let's make a word out of it, shall we? Put a curve next to it, calf, and now we have a word, rook. Rook as in, rook as in wait, wait for me, rook, rookja. Rook. Similarly, if you want to make a longer O sound, if you want to make a longer O sound, for example, here's the, here's the N, noon, this letter N, uh, n, n, n rather, we call it noon. In, in Urdu, this letter is called noon. We learned it on the second day, day number two. We, the very first letter we learned on day number two was noon. If you want to convert the n sound into a nu sound, what it does is it takes a wow, we have to add a wow, and then it, the wow takes not a page, but a ulta page, an upside down page. Looks something like this. And when it joins, it, it's going to look like this. The noon is going to join the wow, and the page goes on this. And that makes a noon. So there is your no, and you make a ult. So in Hindi, instead of going like this, if you want to make a longer sound, you go the other way around. You go this way. That's all. And I have seen people, I have seen people write this thing. They write a no, they write a no, and then they continue with their hand like this. Which is also fine, which is the same thing. So that's a nu. Let's write a word out of it, shall we? So here's a nu. And let's make a word out of it. Noon. Noon. Now what do you suppose noon is? Well, we just talked about it. Noon is what the letter N is called in Urdu. That letter is called noon. Let's do one more word, shall we? I left no, no room in front here. So I'm going to erase this part. Let's, let's write one more letter, beginning with Badi Uki Matra. Uh, not beginning with rather, containing Badi Uki Matra. Let's write a new word. Ka. Kanun. Kanun. Now pay attention. Kanun. If you were to write Kanun with like this, with a calf in Urdu, that spelling would be wrong. That spelling is wrong. Kanun in Urdu is not spelled with a K. It's not spelled with a K. Kanun in Urdu is, is spelled with a Q. So we have to go back and fix it. Kanun. Ka and then Alif. Kanun. That's Kanun. You know what Kanun means? Kanun means uh, law and order. Kanun. Let's write another word with the uh, Chotiyuki Matra. Here we have a T. It's called T. It's called te, so here we have to, and we're going to put a page on it, so that makes it two, two, and then a calf, so that makes a ka, tuk, and then a ro, ro, ro always gives me trouble. Ro and then Aki Matra. 
What do you suppose it makes? What do you suppose it makes? Tukra. Tukra. Tukra is in piece of something. Tukra. Let's put them together, shall we? When you put them together, the ta is going to become smaller. It's going to become a little smaller. Kaf is right here. This is your ko. And then the ro is start here. And then alif. That's how it should look like. Tukra. Tukra. Let's do one more, shall we? I'm going to erase all of these things so we have a little bit of room, a little bit of freedom to move around. We don't need any of this now. We don't need any of this. Let's do a word with Chodyu Kimatra one more time. So here's here's the dal. This is called dal. That's a du. Let's convert du into a du. And then we're gonna put a ka next to it. But the ka, let me first write it in Hindi. Ka is like this. As you can see, there is no dot underneath it. Since there is no dot underneath it, the ka that we wrote is this ka, which is technically kaf plus to chashmi hai. That's the ka. In Urdu, we have another ka, which we call k. This is just called ka, which is called k. And if you were talking about this k, you would have had a dot underneath it. You would have put a dot underneath it to signify, to signify that we're talking about this k. This this dot signifies. But here, this word takes this k, kaf, and do chashmi here. K. Dukh. Dukh as in pain, sorrow, affliction, suffering, whatever you like to call it. Dukh. Let's do one more. Not one more other. Let's do one with the Bariuki Matra. So that now we're going to use this one. Now we're going to use this K here. So that's your K. It's going to join the vowel with a with a ulta page. That's going to make a khu. Bariuki Matra. Khu. Let's put it on the bottom here. Uh, it's going to go not not this way but the other way. And since we're talking about this K, we will put a dot underneath it to, to tell the reminder, to tell the reader that we're talking about this K and not K plus K plus H. Q and then show. Kush. Kush. Push as in to be happy. Let's put them together. When the K and the vowel join, the K looks like this. It changes the form. It no longer looks like this, it looks like this. To which we're going to join the vowel, put the ultra pesh on it, that makes a ku, and then sh the sheen stays by itself. Push. Push as in happy. Let's do one more word, shall we? We're going to pl keep playing with it. We're going to keep playing with this thing. Khush. And now the next word that we're going to write, the next word that we're going to write, we're going to use this, the next word that we're about to write, we're going to use this word, khush, as a prefix. As a prefix. And we're going to add something to it. Khush. And we're going to add to it the second part, which will take a body uki matra. Also, we'll have. Just give me one second. No, we can't do that. What I wanted to do actually. What I wanted to do actually, will convert this very yuki matra into choti yuki matra. We can't do that. Uh, let me let me show you what I had in mind. I was going to add to it, bu. And I thought kushpu is written like this, but kushpu is not written like this. When you want to convert kush into kushpu, it no longer takes a bari uki matra, it takes a choti uki matra. Let's write kushpu. So that's kush. Let's put this next to it. So that's this guy right here.
And now we're going to write Khushbu. Looks like this. And the reason why this drops out when we write Khushbu, the reason why Badi Yuki Matra drops out and because it takes a Chodi Yuki Matra is because when you write it, it looks like this. This is your Khu, then a Sha, and then a Bu. Khushbu. That's what it looks like. Khushbu. You know what Khushbu is? Khushbu means something that smells good. Khushbu. Let's do one more. Let's, let's do one on the other side. Let's do one with a Choti Uki Matra. See if you can read it. So this is Ma. This is Ma because it's about to join something. Mu. Mu. And then this is this is Sa. And it's about to join Aleph. Musa. Musa, and this this is a f this is a fe and a re. This is a fa. Mu, sa, mu sa. The four that we're talking about here. The four that we're talking about. Takes a dot. I'll come to that in a second, and then we have a row. But as you can see, what it says right now is musafar. Musafar is not the word. What we're, word we're looking for is, it requires iki matra, choti iki matra, which is going to go at the bottom of, uh, which which is going to go on f for musafir, musafir. You know what musafir is? Musafir means uh, traveler. Musafir, uh, traveler. I was going to say passenger, but not passenger won't make it. Musafir means traveler. There you go. So that that part I left unfinished. We'll get rid of it. The fur that we're talking about here, this fe right here, is this one right here. This other fe, which is fur, which is actually which is pe pe plus a he, which looks like this. And that is the exact equivalent, that is the exact equivalent of Hindi fur. This is this is the exact equivalent. We have another sound called another sound fur which looks like this. Fe. And when the, when that is used to, re, to, to, to remind the reader that this is the fe we're talking about, we put a dot underneath it. We learned it a long time ago, I don't know when we learned it, what day, right there, on second day, fur. Let's go back to this side again. So we had Kushpu. We had Kushpu. We're going to pl continue playing with this word, but we're going to change the prefix. Instead of Kushpu, Kush means happy, Bu means smell, literally it means happy smell, as in good smell, Kushpu. Kush is the prefix, Bu is the suffix. Now we're going to change the prefix from Kush to bud. B, D, bud. Bud. Bu. Now what do you suppose bud bu is? As I said, bud is the, is the prefix now. Khush means happy or good. Bud means bad or unhappy, bad. Uh, the English equivalent would be mal, M-A-L, mal, malpractice, malfortune, uh, malfeasance, uh, malfunction, same thing, but, as in, uh, as in badnam, badnam means to, to be famous for something bad, badnam, badnaseeb, to have bad luck, uh, badtamiz, if somebody is, is described as bad, badtamiz, that means that person has bad manners, badtamiz, badnaseeb, badnam, same thing, but boo, but is a prefix. But means bad. But boo, bad smell. We have kushpu, we have badbu. Let's back to the other column with choti uki matra.
अगेन वी हैव अ मू एम विथ अ ऊ की मात्रा छोटी ऊ की मात्रा मू दिस वन इज इजी दिस वर्ड इज इजी मू बा मू बा एंड देन अ र एंड फाइनली एक कह एज आई सेड दिस वन इज इजी मुबारक मुबारक एज इन कंग्रेचुलेशंस understand mubarak uh, when muslims meet each other at the time of eid the greetings we say to each other is eid mubarak happy eid mubarak salgira sa salgira mubarak sa salgira means birthday happy birthday that's how we say happy birthday in urdu sar salgira mubarak just do one on this side so we did khushbu we did badbu Let's do next one. So we have P and a T next to each other. That that's going to make it pat, pat, pat. Then we're going to have a lam L, but with a bariu ki matra. This is no longer L; it becomes a lu. Lu, no, but loon. You know what but loon is? But loon is exactly what it says. It's a it's a word that we have taken from English language and we have mutilated it. We have mutilated it. The word in English language originally was pantaloon. From pantaloon, pantaloon in English they have a short form pants. Actual word is pantaloon, and from pantaloon because we had trouble pronouncing pantaloon. We have, as I said, mutilated it to patloon. Let's put it together. Let's put it together. Let me do it. Let me do it right here. So there is your pa, there is your ta, and then la. This is so far. We have a pa, we have a ta, we have a la, and the vowel is going to join to it. It takes all the pesh, and then uh, patloon, as in as in pantaloon, patloon. Let's do with the shorty uki matra. Let's do it right here. Ru, and then ka, ruh. Because it's this ka, it takes a dot. Ruh. You know what ruh means? Ruh means face. You hear this word quite often in poetry and guzzles and kawali. Ruh, face. Uh, they don't say chera. They don't say uh, how how else can you say face chera? Uh, Ruh is what is used. It means face. Let's do one with the body of Kimata, shall we? We need to raise this thing. So here we have a the. We don't want the. We want do body of Kimata. So it, it's going to take a vowel and ulta pesh. So that makes it do, do, r. Then we have a b, b with a badi ki matra, badi. So it's going to take a b and a choti a b. So far we have dur b. So there is your b and it's a badi ki matra, dur b, na, turbin. You know what durbin means? Durbin means a binocular. It has a prefix durbin. Durbin has a prefix of dur. Dur is in far away. Durbin to be able to see something that is far away. Binoculars. Durbin. Let's put them together, shall we? Actually, there is not much to put together because these three letters. The reason why there is not much to put together is because these three letters do not join. These three letters do not join with anything that comes to the left. They only join. Wow, as we have seen before, joins, but only if it comes something to the right. When the letters comes to the left of them, the dal, the wow, the re, the re, the ze, they do not join anything that comes to the left. So these three are going to stay the same. We just have to join the be and the choti e to the noon. So here we go. So be and the choti e, because it appear because it is appearing in the middle of the word, is going to take this shape. That's a b. That's a b. And then it joins the noon. 
and that reads beam. We just have to put dur in front of it. Du, durbin, binoculars. Just do one on the other side. With choti uki matra. So here is the gaff. This is gaff. This is gur. Gaff is called gur. But we don't want gur, we want goo. Go, ro, and then we have a chotiye plus alif. The reason I'm hesitating is because right now is because this is a tricky one. It could be chotiye or bariye. We really don't make a fuss about it in Urdu. The reason we do not make a fuss about whether it's short year or buddy year, because it doesn't matter, is just a year. We need a year here. We, we just need a year. And because it is appearing, the other reason why we don't make a fuss is because it doesn't matter whether it's short year or buddy year, it takes the same form. Because it's appearing in the middle of the word, it's going to take this form. So, so far we have Guru, and then this is Akimatra. So this is Ya, a Ya. And even this part, the way it is written, is not actually a word. The actual word requires iki matra, choti iki matra, and that is going to go under ri, and under ro. Under ro, we need a iki matra, and now it reads guria, guria, as in a doll. Guria. Just put it together. Watch, watch what how it looks when you put it together. So this is the ga, and it's going to join the ro. And we need a uti matra. So so far is guru. So far is gur. We don't want gur. We don't want guri. Guri, and then ya. Guria. So this word happens to have three matras. It happens to have three matras. Can you identify all three of the matras? Well, it has a choti uti matra. It has a choti iki matra, and it has a badi iki matra. Choti u, choti u, choti e, badi e. There is a choti e. Oh, that's aki matra. Sorry, never mind. This is aki matra. So we have a uki matra, choti uki matra, choti e ki matra right there, and aki matra. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. But nonetheless, the fact doesn't change that it does have three three matras. Let's do one on the, this side. Let's do one on this side with badi uki matra. Let me first write it in Hindi. Let me first write it in Hindi so then I can show you in Urdu with the incorrect spelling and then we'll talk about the correct spelling. Because in Hindi it's very straightforward. The letters are is su. And the reason why in Hindi it's very straightforward is because you just have sir. You just use sir for everything. But we have we have this is a sir. This guy is a sir. As you can see right there. And this guy is a sir. This is called swat. It looks like this. And it's called swad. And that's a sir also. But that does not exist in Hindi. Therefore, this sir is approximately the same as Hindi sir, but not exactly. Su. So if we were to write like this, su, this is su, su. Oh, we need a badi uki matra. This is choti uki matra. That's wrong. We need a, we need a, that is correct. That is badi uki matra. So it's going to take a while and ulta pesh, su, and then ra, and then a ta, surat. You know what surat means? Surat can mean face, it can also mean situation, it can also mean condition. Condition, badi buri surat hai. Bhoti achi surat hai. That means it's a very good condition. 
Surat also means face. But the way I wrote it is wrong. This is not, Surat does not take seen. Surat is going to take Swad. So we have to go back and fix it. We have to go back and fix it. It doesn't take, it doesn't take Sir. It doesn't take seen. It takes a Swad. Yeah, that's much better. Surat. Surat. Which means, as I said, face or a condition. I'm going to continue with this thing. We need room. I'm going to erase this thing. Let, let's play with that. Let's erase all of this too. And I'm going to make, we're going to make a compound word out of it. A compound word. Shall you ready? Let's begin. So this is Surat. And then if this is hey. This is here right there. So we should we should have written the Hindi part. Let's write the Hindi surat right here. Su surat. Watch, watch how we gonna write it in Hindi and watch how we gonna write it in Urdu. Surat and this is a her. Ha le hal. Hal, you know how what hal means. Hal means uh, condition, situation, surat hai. Uh, kya hal chal thik hai? Hal chal is how we say it. Hal chal, hal is means how, how are things going? Hal. But we, we want, we're trying to combine the two here and make a compound word. And the way we do that, here we go. The way we're going to do that is that, this is, this is very important. We have never learned it before. So we put a zair underneath this letter right here. Listen carefully. This is this is not a choti iki matra. This is not a choti iki matra. Because choti iki matra, choti iki matra never ever appears at the very end of the word. It always appears in the middle of the word. And yet here, it's appearing at the, at the end of this word, surat. Because this is not a choti iki matra. This is how we read it. Once you put, once you put, this is an exception. This is when you put a zabar, uh, sorry, zair, and in the last word, last letter, whenever you put a zair and in the last letter, you know something else is coming up with it. It's a compound word. And now it reads Surate Hal. Ta becomes a te. Surate Hal. But in Hindi, the way you're going to handle it is that you're going to put a hyphen here. You're going to have to put a A here like this. Surate Hal. As in, how are things going? Surate Hal. Let's, let's write it together. We're going to put it together. When you put it together, this ha is going to become like this. It's going to join the alif and then lam. Surat hal. It's a compound word, surat hal. You hear it in the news all the time. Mulki surat hal. Mulki surat hal means the situation of the country. Mulki surat hal ka bera garke. It's in a horrible condition. In other words, the country is in a dire situation. Things are going to hell in a handbasket. Let's not go there. Otherwise, we'll be here forever trying to explain this uh, expression that I just used. surat e hal Very good. Let's, let's continue with this thing. Let's continue with the Surat. We'll get back to Chot Yuki Matra in a second. Let's continue with the Surat. Let's add... Let's, let's add... Now we're going to use the word Surat as a suffix and let's add prefix to it. Shall we? Let's do that. Shall we? Here we go. I left no room for myself there. No room at all. There is a b and a d. But surat. But surat. This right here. But. But surat. As you know, as we already talked about, but means bad or not ple not pleasant. As in but kismat, but kismat, but kismat, but tamiz, uh, but nam. Same thing here. But surat means somebody who has a bad face. That's another way of saying ugly. But surat. But surat. There we go. It's a prefix. Now it's but surat. Let's write another word, shall we? Let's write another word. We're going to change the prefix from but from but to khu. To khu.
Ku. Ku. And then the bow is not going to sit here. It's not going to sit by itself. It's going to join the sub. It's going to join the swat like this. Kupsurat. You know what kupsurat means? Kupsurat means pretty. Again, kup is the prefix. It means good. Kupsurat, kush, kupnish. Kupnish? No. Kupsurat. I can't think of any other word with the prefix of kup. Kupnish? I'm not sure about it. Kup means good. Let's do a word. We have done many words with the badi yuki matra. Let's do a word with the choti yuki matra. I'm going to raise all of this thing now. Kupsurat. Let's see if you can read this one. Any idea what this is? Let's take a look at it, shall we? As we discussed it before many times, well not many times, but at least at least two or three times. Okay, listen carefully. This is a sir. This is seen. This is called seen. This is so, seen. So, when it's about to join something, when it's about to join something, it only has this part. It loses all of this. It loses all of this part. It goes away. And that's what it looks like when it's about to join something. Okay? Keep this thing. So, if this something like this appears in the middle of the word, you know it's a so. But sometimes what happens is that people become lazy. And they become lazy and in a hurry when they are writing, they don't want to take their time, they don't want to take their sweet time to make two of them, they just become lazy. And they make one long one. So this long, one long one that you see there is a sir. And it has a uki matra on top of it, choti uki matra. So it becomes a su. Su. Then we have a na, this is the noon, this is, this, this is a noon. Sun. What do you suppose comes after that? What comes after that is other so. This is other so. But this so has aki matra. Sun sa no, sun san. Do you know what sun san means? Sun san means something, a place that is un, uninhabited. There is nobody there. Desolate. Something that is there. Uh, something that is deserted, something that is dreary and quiet, like a desert. Something that is deserted, uninhabit uninhabited, uh, desolate. There's not much going on. There is no tree, there's nothing going on. It's just sunsan. Sanata is another word we use for it. Sunsan. That's what it means. Let me rewrite this word so it doesn't have all these ugly parts to it. Let's do one more time. Actually, all I have to do is take this out and just put the elif back. There we go. Let's rewrite it, shall we? Let's rewrite it. Let's do it here. Sunsan. Now we could write it like this, or we could have written it like this. Two for the seen, and one for the noon, and then two for the seen again, and one for the other that is about to join. And this is also fine. That's also Sunsan. So, these two that you see there is for the second sir. This is the first sir. This is a no. And then this last part that you see there, we have to make one more because the alif has to join it. Alif does not join with the second part. It, may, it takes its own. That's the aki matra. Sun san. You can write it like that. You can write it like that. They are both perfectly good. They are both perfectly acceptable. Sun san. Let's do one more. Let me first write it in Hindi and then we're going to write it in Urdu and of course if I'm writing first in Hindi you know that when I'm going to write in Urdu I'm going to misspell it and then we're going to go back and correct the spelling. Ku, so this is Ka, Ku, Lo, it's going to take a La, 
school and phi, cool phi. But this one has a dot underneath, which means the fur we're looking for is this fur. And it takes badi ki matra, which means we need choti here. Cool phi. The way it is written is wrong. Kulfi, the word Kulfi does not take K in Urdu, it does not take a K, Kulfi in Urdu takes a Q. We have to go back and fix it. Now we have to figure out how to join everything. Let's do it on this side. So here's your curve. It's going to join the la. And then a fur and a choti ear. There you go, that's how it looks like. One more time. This part right here is the curve. And then now we join the la. And then to which we join the fur. And to which we join the choti ear. Cool thing. That's how it looks like. Kulfi. One more time. And you know what kulfi is? Kulfi is an ice cream. Kulfi. Let's do the next one. Again, let me first write it in Urdu, uh, in Hindi. This is the U, which of course is Alif and Pesh, U, Mo, Ra, Mo, and Ra, Umar, Umar. But that's not how we spell Umar in Urdu. Umar in Urdu does not take Alif. This, this Alif is exactly equal to your A. Uh. This is exactly equal to this. But in addition to that, we have this letter, Ain. It's called Ain. I don't think I wrote it correctly. There we go. Ain. And that's also a. And whenever the correct spelling of the word requires ain, in Hindi we use the same a. So that's why this is u. This does not change. U is just u in, in But that is wrong. We need ain. And when ain is about to join something, it does not take this form. When it's about to join something, it does not take this form, it takes this form. So here we go. There is your a, uh, not technically a, uh, but ain that becomes u, to which we're going to join the meme like that and a rim. Umar. Umar is an age. Aapki umar kitni hai? How old are you? Umar. Let's continue. Let's do a word with a choti uki matra. And then we have a meme and an alif. It's aki matra. Shu, ma. And if you are Hindi speaker, if you're not familiar with Urdu at all, and if you're here to learn Urdu, this is a very alien, very foreign word. Shu, ma. And then a lam. L. You know what that means? Shumal. Shumal is how we say in Urdu, North, Shumal. Let's put it together, shall we? Let's put it together. When, when it joins, it's only going to take these two. That's it. Only two. Sho. And we want a shu. And now we have to join Ma. So meme, when it's written by itself, it goes from the top and goes to the bottom. When it's about to join something, it starts from the bottom. And it joins the Alif. So it starts from the bottom, joins the Alif, that's Shu, Ma and then Lam by itself, Shumal, as in North, as in North. Let's do one more word, let's do another word, and this word that we are about to write will have both Chotiuki Matra and Badiuki Matra. Let's do it together, shall we? 
What we need is a gene. This is called gene. Jo. This is your regular jo, to which it's going to take a choti uki matra. Jo. And to which we're going to add nu and a wow with ultapesh. That makes a nu. So far it says ju nu ju short short u and then a long u ju nu and then a bur. And again, if you're a Hindi speaker, this is also very much a fo foreign word to you, an alien word probably. You never heard of it. It reads junoop. Do you know what junoop means? Can you make a wild guess? Make a wild guess. We just learned a word shumal, which means north. You got it right. Junu means south. Junu. But that's how we write it. All we have to do is join them together. But there is nothing to join. There is nothing to join. This this J is going to get up. And because it knows that it's about to join, it cannot take that form. It takes this form. That's all. Let me rewrite it so it looks a little bit pretty because it's going up and like this. Junu. Voila. That means south. South. Let's try two more words. The last two words that we're going to learn. Let's put them on the top here. So that was north. This is south. The last two words that we're going to write. We are here to learn Uki Matra. The last two words, the pair that we're going to about to learn, contain no uki matra at all. No, neither choti uki matra nor badi uki matra. They both con contain choti iki matra. But we're going to put them anyway. You'll see why. This is mo. Then we have sho. Sho, much. Then we have a ro. But the ro is going to take a zer, which means it takes a choti iki matra, which I should have known ahead of time. I put ro too close. Mush kri. Mush kri is reached so far, and then we need a q. Calf. Mashriq. And what mashriq means? It means east. Let's learn one more word, shall we? Ma, and then a go, but which go? We have two goes. This is a go, this is a gaff, and this is a go, gain. Which one does it take? The writer has to know. It's going to take this one, second one. And when it joins, it takes this form. It takes this form. Mug. Then it takes a re, re with a zer next, next to it, mat, re, and then a b, magrib, magrib. You know what magrib means? Magrib means you got it. If this is east, this must be west. Magrib. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite this word. The way it's written, the way it's written is not wrong. There is nothing wrong with it. The way it's written is fine, but it's very much a child, a, a writing of a child. It's very much childish writing. I'm going to show you now how it's written without lifting hand. So this m, when it joins the g, we do not lift our hand. So now we're going to write g like this. It goes like this, and that's also a g. Mug. Magrib. And that's how, that's how the kids are taught directions, the little children are taught directions in the school in Pakistan. This is how it goes. Mashrik, Magrib, Sumal, Janoop. East, West, North, South. That's the order we go in. You see how I had to slow down when I was saying in English? Because in English we don't do it that way, in that order. But that's what we do in Urdu in that order. Mashrik Magrib, Mashrik Magrib, Sumal Janu. 
مشرق مغرب شمال جنوب ایسٹ ویسٹ نارتھ اینڈ ساؤتھ اگین آئی ٹو سلو ڈاؤن مشرق مغرب شمال جنوب سو وین یو وانٹ ٹو سی ویسٹرن کنٹریز وین یو وانٹ ٹو سی ویسٹرن کنٹریز کنٹریز پلورل سنگولر آف کورس یو نو اٹس ملک ملک مینس کنٹری دا پلورل آف ملک از ممالک ممالک اینڈ ویسٹرن کنٹریز آر کول مغربی ممالک مشرقی ممالک وڈ بی ایسٹرن کنٹریز جنوبی ممالک جنوبی ممالک سدرن کنٹریز اینڈ سو آن اینڈ سو فورتھ آئی ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو کیپ آن گوئنگ بیکاز آئی واز اباؤٹ ٹو رائٹ دا ورڈ ممالک ہیئر بیکاز اٹ ڈز ہیو اے مو او کی ماترا شو بی ڈو اٹ لیٹس ڈو اٹ لیٹس لا نو لیٹس ناٹ ڈو اٹ بیکاز دس از نائسلی لیڈ آؤٹ دا فور ڈائریکشنز ایسٹ ویسٹ نارتھ ساؤتھ آئی ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو ریز اینتھنگ لیٹس چیپ اٹ لائک دس دیٹس دی اینڈ آف او کی ماترا That is very much the end of Uki Matra. We have arrived at our destination. Tomorrow, tomorrow on day number 17, we'll start. Today was the part, today was part 4 of 4 of Uki Matra. Tomorrow, we'll start another uh, stretch, another segment of four episodes. Day numbers 17, 18, 19, and 20. 17, 18, 19, and 20. That's the last four parts, last four episodes of a segment. where we'll cover the last matra, which is Eki matra. And we have gone, we have been going in a segment of four, as you know, the first four, one through four, Aki matra, then day number five, six, seven, eight, we did Eki matra, then day number nine, 10, 11, and 12, we did Oki matra, and then right now we are doing day number 13, 14, 15, and 16, we finished today, which was Uki matra. A, Aki matra, Eki matra, Oki matra, Uki matra, and now, Tomorrow we'll begin Eki Matra. All right? Bye now.